Hello and welcome to this lecture. Today we are going to discuss about antipsychotic agents. And let's discuss with the case study that I am going to present. So a person was male, 22 years old, and a university student. He stopped attending his university class at the end of the first academic year due to his inability to focus on his studies. The patient did not take his prescribed medication regularly and was unwilling to take them on his own. In fact, he only took medicines under the supervision of his parents. The patient was first hospitalized as at his parents and his request in 2009. His parents noted that he became progressively introverted. He did not get out of bed, speak or open his eyes. He remained in one position for unusually long time after being placed in that position by someone else the patient spoke haltingly and had a negative attitude and was diagnosed with psychotic depression and initiated treatment as his symptoms were not completely eliminated his treatment was changed. When he was hospitalized for the second time at his own request, he complained of fatigue, opposition, unhappiness, and introversion, and he exhibited decreased self care, decelerated movement, and impaired functions. The patient strayed into space stood motionless and was unable to speak. The doctor determined his final diagnosis to be schizophrenia. After discharge, he regularly attended doctor's follow-up visits in the schizophrenia outpatient clinic and was prescribed antidepressants, anxiolytic and antipsychotic drugs. So this is the case study for especially the patient that are schizophrenic and the drugs, especially antipsychotic agents, have been used for the treatment of schizophrenia. And the symptoms, especially the psychotic symptoms, consist of grandiosity, paranoia, hallucination, and delirium. So, grandiosity is just like that a person false perception about himself. Paranoia is just like fear of something, uh, maybe someone is going to attack him, or fear of unknown like this is another example of hallucination i put the picture call me immediately if this prescription causes any headache or hallucination so the patient look up the person like insects animal or uh, visual changes that happen because of uh, the disease delirium is another uh, symptoms especially for psychotic patient so what the drugs we are giving with giving them uh, antipsychotic agents which is classified into first generation antipsychotics and second generation antipsychotics the difference between the first generation that these actually competitively blocking the d2 receptors dopamine receptors whereas the second generation antipsychotic drugs is better than the first generation antipsychotic agent because of the less extra pyramidal symptoms uh, so it means that the extra pyramidal symptoms uh, will be less as compared to the first generation uh, what is meant by extra pyramidal symptoms we see that in the first generation we mentioned that uh, the drugs is responsible for d2 dopamine receptor blocking agents so obviously when that we blocking the dopamine receptors so the sign and symptoms appear because of the dopamine receptor blockage are known as extra pyramidal symptoms and uh, then the other side effects which 
could leads in the second generation are metabolic side effects but uh, in second generation although they have uh, fewer extra pyramidal symptoms but they are have high risk of metabolic side effects so these are the list of our drugs that classify as first generation and second generation and first generation have been further classified as low potency and high potency depending upon patient requirement so chlorpromazine is used as antipsychotic agent then we have haloperidol injections that can be used so what is the receptor they are responsible for dopamine receptor blocking activity in the brain so by blocking the dopamine receptor we are decreasing the dopamine concentration and that is why the patient feeling extra pyramidal symptoms but that symptoms will be less in second generation then they are also responsible for serotonin receptor blocking activity in the brain so how they blocking the activity if you take a look on that side that uh, that these are the blue heart sign symptoms you can see the blue heart uh, like is representing the dopamine and that dopamine is binding with the receptor in the yellow sign that showing you the dopamine receptor blocking agent so what these drug are doing that the drug are displacing the dopamine which usually need to bind with the dopamine receptors so by competitively binding to the dopamine receptor especially the antipsychotic drugs and that they will be decreased response of our dopamine and that as a result they will be decrease of the dopamine level and when we talk about antipsychotic action they are responsible for reducing hallucination uh, they are responsible for treating the symptoms that we discussed like hallucination delusion are the symptoms that are associated with schizophrenia and they are responsible for producing a calming effect and reduce spontaneous physical movements uh, for second generation they are responsible for uh, especially endonia or apathy or impaired attention or cognitive impairment which is used for treatment of them so schizophrenia or when we talk about endonia is just like person that uh, is not feeling sense of happiness or not feeling enjoy in 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 an environment where he or she must need to be enjoy like if you see in this picture he is not enjoying the ride which is supposed to be under the normal circumstances he must enjoy that then apathy uh, which is like sense uh, of no care and ignorancy like if a person need help the person say i don't care so the sense of uh, you can say that a apathy the word can be split up into apathy so he don't have uh, empathy a sympathy uh, to the other person that need helps so the extra pyramidal effects will be parkinson like symptoms uh, dystonia uh, motor restlessness tardive dyskinesia so what are them like for example this is actually dystonia where uh, the movement of the body like hand and uh, the feet or uh, the neck uh, changes and the movement uh, abnormal movement of the hand or abnormal movement of the feet can be called as dystonia and why this dystonia occur because we already mentioned that dopamine receptor blockage result in less uh, production of dopamine and that is responsible for that effect then we mentioned another effect like tardive dyskinesia and that is symptoms could range to mild to severe uh, in which the symptoms like movement of the mouth uh, rapid movement of the body uh, face uh, figure disfigure the face structure or face uh, changes rapidly eye blinking difficulty in breathing or difficulty in swallowing sometime patient feel difficulty in speaking as well the other effect could be antihematic effect anticholinergic effect orthostatic hypotension and light headedness as well especially the, and the last one is the sexual dysfunction so why this happen because we have to understand that when we talk about anticholinergic effect 
the anticholinergic effect like urinary retention, dry mouth, feeling hot, uh, decreased sweating, tachycardia, blood eye, sedation, dizziness and confusion and hallucination. So these effects occur with that, uh, with these drugs. Then autostatic hypotension, uh, low blood pressure uh, while standing up. So what he actually anti drugs doing, why they are having so many effects? That's the question that you may ask that why anticholinergic effect, why there are so many effects? Because the anti drugs, they are acting not only on the dopamine receptors, but they are acting on a wide range of receptors like it acts on serotonin receptors, histamine receptors, alpha adrenergic receptors. So if you take a look of this diagram, and uh, the blood line is showing you the blockage of these receptors so they are blocking not only dopamine but they are blocking serotonin histamine receptors alpha adrenergic receptors and cholinergic uh, receptors which is muscarinic receptors so by blocking them uh, we the patient can feel face these signs and symptoms so the therapeutic use of these agents is used for the treatment of schizophrenia it is also used for prevention of severe nausea and vomiting and the combination can be used in treating of the chronic pain with severe anxiety agitated or disruptive behavior is can be treated by these drugs when we talk about pharmacokinetics uh, their absorption varies with the food it can pass the blood brain barrier and can bind to the plasma protein and metabolize by cytochrome p450 in the liver the adverse effects are many because of their wide range of activities in different sectors like urinary retention, weight gain, seizures, sedation, extra pyramidal effects, postural hypotension, sexual dysfunction, arrhythmias, sudden cardiac death as well, and then dry mouth. So thank you so much for today's lecture. Hope to see you again.